Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. My name is Eric and today we're talking jerky. Now I wanted to cater today's video to those of you that might be new to the wide world of jerky making and I thought it'd be fun to write a recipe for today's video that was easy to make, easy to follow and produced absolutely delicious beef jerky. So if you love jerky or if you're brand new to jerky making, you're in the right place. I'm gonna take you through each one of the steps, explain why we do what we do and before you know it, you'll be making high quality jerky at home yourself. The best part about today's recipe is that you probably already have most, if not everything that you need to make really good jerky. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show as we make our pepper crusted pineapple jerky. Let's get started. When it comes to choosing beef for the beef jerky, I tend to choose cuts that are on the leaner side. This is the eye of round. It was on sale at my local grocer for two bucks a pound, but the top round works great. The bottom round works great as well. Notice it's got some fat caps on it. We're gonna trim all that off here in a minute as we want our meat to be as lean as possible. Fat can potentially go rancid, which can spoil our beef jerky, and we definitely don't want that. So the first thing we're gonna do is take these three eye of rounds, place them into our freezer so that they can partially freeze. It's much easier to trim and cut your meat when it's partially frozen. I went ahead and rechilled the meat since it started to thaw just a little bit. And now that it's partially frozen again, we're gonna cut that into quarter inch slices against the grain. So we get asked in almost every video, what type of knives are we using? This is a Kuditsuke chef's knife from Dahlstrung. Earlier, we were using a boning knife, also from Dahlstrung, and I'll put a link in the description box below in case you want more information on either one of those. So once we have our slices cut, I'm just gonna cut them in half, which is gonna give me smaller bite size jerky pieces. And one particular issue that comes up when it comes to making beef jerky is whether you should cut your meat with the grain or against the grain. And the answer is really up to you. If you cut the meat against the grain, like I'm doing here, your end result is gonna be a more tender bite, really easy to chew. If you cut it with the grain, you're gonna end up with beef jerky that has more of a bite to it. It's gonna be a little chewier. And so it's really a matter of personal preference. Most people cut it against the grain, and I'm gonna do it both ways in this video, and at the end of this video, we'll talk about it. But here's the grain of the eye of round. Notice it's running left to right. And for this particular muscle, we're gonna slice it with the grain so that you can see what that looks like. So I'm just gonna cut it in half so I don't have you know, enormous pieces of jerky. And our slices are gonna be in the same direction as the muscle fibers. So see how the lines in the muscle fibers are going long ways? Well, that's with the grain. And so this is gonna give us a chewier bite and it's still gonna be delicious. It's just gonna have a slightly different texture. Our meat is still very cold. Some parts are starting to thaw, but most of it is still partially frozen. And that just makes slicing into it very easy. So once we have all of our meat prepared, we need to weigh it. This is going to help us prepare our marinade. We're going to be using 10 pounds of prepared meat for today's jerky recipe. And so once I've got my 10 pounds weighed out, which is 4,540 grams. I'm gonna head over to the recipe link in the description box below, which will take you right to my website. Scroll down to the recipe and you'll notice a multiplier. Now, the recipe is formulated for five pounds of prepared meat, but you can easily half the recipe by clicking 0.5 or double the recipe by clicking 2X, which is what we're doing here. Now that the recipe reflects the amount of prepared meat we're gonna be using and the seasonings have all been adjusted, let's add that to our bowl and prepare our marinade. We're gonna start with some fresh black pepper. We're then gonna come back with some onion powder and some garlic powder. I do wanna add some chili flakes, not too much though. I just want a really nice low level heat. And then we're gonna add some smoked paprika. The combination of flavor here is gonna be incredible. We've got dark brown sugar and then we're gonna come back with some umami rich Worcester sauce. We've also got liquid smoke, not too much. And then we're gonna add light soy sauce. Now this is not low sodium soy sauce. This is light soy sauce. Finally, we're gonna add some pineapple juice and give everything a whisk. The pineapple juice is gonna bring a very nice acidity, a unique sweetness, and it's actually gonna help tenderize our meat as well. So once we get that whisked together, we're just gonna take that and add it to our 
prepared meat, and we want to make sure that we mix this marinade into the meat really well. Sometimes these pieces of meat can get stuck together, so you just want to make sure that you loosen the meat up, you get that marinade in between all those pieces, and once you have it properly mixed, we're going to put a piece of cling film on it and place it into the refrigerator. What we're looking to do is have that meat soak up all that marinade. And so ideally, when we're done, we're gonna have little to no juice left over. So into the fridge it goes to marinate for eight to 24 hours. I personally like to leave mine in there for about 16 hours. I find that that's like the sweet spot. And this is what it looks like 16 hours later. It looks great, it's got a nice color. It looks like it's really taken on that marinade. So let's go ahead and get this ready for drying. I'm gonna show you two ways to dry your beef jerky. The first First is going to be on a drying rack on top of a sheet pan and I'm going to simply lay my beef jerky right next to each other. You know, we don't want them to overlap. And once my tray is completely full, we're going to sprinkle some cracked black pepper. That's going to give us that pepper crust and then we're going to place this into our kitchen oven. So we're gonna bake our jerky in the oven on low with the door slightly open. The temperature of your oven should be between 170 Fahrenheit to 200 Fahrenheit. And this process should take anywhere between three to five hours, maybe a little longer. It just depends on how thick your jerky is. All right, while that batch is drying, let me show you a second way that we're gonna prepare our jerky. We're gonna be using a dehydrator. Dehydrators are great for making beef jerky because they can really get to those low temperatures. There's a fan constantly blowing on the meat so it dries a lot more efficiently. So as we finish up preparing our jerky, we've got our pepper crust on it. We're going to set that to the side and get the rest of our meat trayed up. And then we're going to place it into the dehydrator. As far as the temperature goes, I'm going to set mine between 145 Fahrenheit and 155 Fahrenheit. And you can go a little bit hotter if you want. You know, a lot of people like to do 160, but I find that that slower drying produces a slightly better product. And we're just going to go ahead and load all those trays into the dehydrator and close it off. One of the advantages to using a dehydrator is the quantity of jerky that you could make. I mean, we've got this thing packed. So let's close that off. We're going to dehydrate this for four to six hours. And I'm going to want to start checking my jerky after about four hours. I don't want to over dry the meat. My ideal temperature range is between 145 and 155 Fahrenheit. And while that's drying, the jerky in the oven is now finished. Let's take it out and take a peek at what that looks like. To determine when your jerky is ready, you should be able to bend it and you'll see signs of it cracking, but it won't snap. Uh, think of how you would bend a green branch. So as we bend this piece right here, you'll notice that it bends very easy. It's very pliable. You'll notice it'll start to crack and you'll see white fibers in the meat. All right, so let's check our dehydrator. It's been about six hours. And when I pull it out, it looks like it's ready, but we won't know for sure until we give it a proper bin test. So let me just loosen some of these pieces off of the dehydrator mat and let's grab a piece to determine its doneness. So we're just gonna bend it regular. Now, if it snaps, that means it's dried too long. You're gonna wanna check it a little bit sooner, but as we bend this right here, you'll start to notice it cracking. Notice those white fibers right there in the very center. That's absolutely perfect. Now, if I pull this apart, it should pull apart relatively easy. This was cut against the grain 
and our beef jerky is officially done. One last thing I wanna talk about, especially if you dehydrate at lower temperatures, is how to pasteurize your beef jerky. To pasteurize your beef jerky, we are gonna crank the heat up in our oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna take our beef jerky and place it on a sheet pan, set it into that oven for 10 minutes. Pasteurizing your beef jerky after it's made is just a safety precaution to kill off any potential harmful bacteria that might be on your meat. So we're just gonna set that 10 minute timer into the oven and after 10 minutes, our jerky is pasteurized, it's ready to eat, ready to store, and it looks incredible. So this is the jerky that came out of our oven. Nice, beautiful jerky there. This is the jerky that came out of our dehydrator. And we started with about 10 pounds of raw meat and we ended up with about three and a half pounds of finished jerky. All right, let's just go ahead and give this a taste and see how we did. We're gonna start with the oven made beef jerky. And this was cut against the grain. Nice pepper crust on top. Smells amazing, looks great. So let's just, let's see how it tastes. Delicious. It's got a very tender bite. It's got that classic beef jerky chew. Um, it did dry a little hotter than I would have preferred. I just couldn't get my oven that low, but overall, this is a really nice piece of beef jerky. So let's try the one with the uh, dehydrator. And right off the bat, I can tell this is a little bit lighter, dried at lower temperatures. And this is also cut against the grain. So let's just uh, give it a bite. Mm. Mm. Wow, that's spectacular. Jerky making is a lot about personal preference and that's the beauty of making jerky at home. The spices that you choose to use, how dry you want your end result to be. And for me, this is just about perfect. You know, drying it at a slightly lower temperature with that fan blowing on it in the dehydrator. And I understand not everybody has a dehydrator, but what it does is it produces a nice tender bite with that classic jerky chew. I personally feel that between the oven jerky and the dehydrator jerky, the spices actually are a little more well-rounded, whereas the one that dried at a slightly higher temperature with no air blowing on top of it tend to be a little sharper on the tongue. Overall, I love the texture. I love the flavor. It's just a rock solid recipe. It's a great balanced jerky between acidity, savory, and sweet. All right, now that we've tasted both of those, let's taste the jerky that is sliced with the grain. So the grain is running up and down just like that. And so we're gonna give this a bite and see uh, the difference in texture between against the grain and with the grain, maybe help you decide which way you wanna cut yours. So here we go. Mm. Mm. It is tougher to pull apart. It is definitely chewier overall. It doesn't break down nearly as quick. Uh, they both taste exactly the same. It's just that the texture and the overall jerky eating experience is slightly different. Personally, I like a against the grain cut, but if you like that chewier type of texture, then you might want to give a with the grain cut a shot and decide for yourself. All right, and that's how you make beef jerky at home. We did it in the oven. We did it in the dehydrator great entry-level recipe that's gonna produce amazing beef jerky. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you liked this video or got anything out of it, a great big thumbs up would be helpful. If you're new to this channel, and this is the first video you've seen from our channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be notified of each one of our uploads. We post a new video each week. I don't want you to miss a single one. See you next week, bye-bye.